Hi, I'm Dr. Murray Orr, and with patients being more and more aware of what they're putting into their bodies and mouths, today we're going to do an interview about a topic of a bit of contention and interest from patients, which is ceramic implants. So we're really lucky today to have lovely Imogen here from a dental implant company. So she's like right at the forefront of implants and her company is actually um, a Switzerland based uh, company. So they're really into what they're doing called Strahmen and they had some of the original implant surfaces that have the longest studies in the world in terms of prospective clinical research on how dental implants work with people's bodies and how they integrate and how they and how they perform over the longest period of time. And so if you know anything about dentistry and and the scientific peer review process and especially if you want to know what's going to your body you need those really long-term studies that are sort of unbiased from a perspective of just the clinical research and um, and so that really brings a lot of caliber to this discussion to be working with a company like that so I'm really grateful that um, and excited really that we've got this this time here today with Imogen the reason that people come into the practice normally to me is not to get a dental implant it's I've got a missing tooth. And so if you give us an overview of like the, the traditional options that are available and then how implants actually come into the picture for patients, I think that'd give everyone a really good understanding of how valuable this actually can be. Thanks, Murray. So traditionally you have a few different options when it comes to a missing tooth. So you can have a removable device like a denture, you can have um, more fixed appliances like a bridge, which involve other teeth and a standalone artificial tooth replacement is where dental implants come in. So a dental implant mimics the tooth root. It looks like a screw and comes in various materials now, the newest being the ceramic material. So normally they're titanium and that's the traditionally placed implant that our company has made for many years. Um, then the missing tooth is basically replaced by yourself and the shade matched um, with the patient's other teeth. So it's really interesting you say that because it was only like a couple of years ago that I started to hear this request from patients about ceramic implants. What specifically is it about this ceramic implant, this Strahman Pure is the one that Strahman um, has released, which I'm actually really excited about. Can you tell us what it is about this implant that is just um, so dynamic and different compared to the traditional titanium implants that, that used to be used? Yeah, sure, Murray. So the ceramic is basically a metal-free white material. So at first you have immediately a better aesthetic result. Right. You see patients that implants are made to last a lifetime. We warranty them for a lifetime because they're meant to be with you for a long time. So with the white ceramic implants, as your gums naturally recede over your lifetime, you're exposing more of that white implant as opposed to starting to see that gray line. So the aesthetics are the first area where patients start to see a benefit. The other of course comes down to the materials. So the material used obviously looking white and also being an alternative to titanium. Some people do have a titanium allergy and this material provides an alternative to them where traditionally there wasn't another option. Also with the pure ceramic, there is no metal component in this implant. It is actually one piece and then the final crown is put on top of that implant. That's actually really fascinating because, you know, a long, a long time ago, I saw some studies and uh, x-rays in particular of the original uh, zirconia based implants and I think they had a lot of problems. There was not a lot of integration and they had very, very large thread designs. I don't want to get too technical here, but I, I think a lot of dentists in general had grave concerns. And so one of the things that I found really encouraging about the fact that Strahman had um, brought out an implant was that we're not talking about some new player here to the to the implant game the peer-reviewed prospective clinical research and again not to get too technical from a patient perspective but this really matters in terms of science and longevity and all of the testing that we can do from the scientific process which which shows us like what are as close to objective truths as we can get has shown that Strahman's is it SLA that yeah SLA surface for the titanium implants um, had some of the best results that we've seen over like the longest periods in terms of osteo integration, which is the, the joining of bone 
closely to implants without chronic inflammation and long-term success. So when I first saw that Stramen Pure was coming to the market um, as a as a well something that was released by the same sort of company, I was like really excited about that. So one of the things that I think a lot of patients have had uh, issues with in the past is this idea of biocompatibility. And my patients I know all the time they come in and they're asking what is the most biocompatible option? It's like this new level of consciousness has arrived and people are now more than ever interested in what am I putting into my body? Where does it come from? And, and am I getting at the moment with what we know the best alternative? What's your comment on that in relation to Strum and Pure? Is it as good as we're hearing or, or is, there, is there something else that's there? Or what's your honest feedback and take on it? So as you said, Strauman is very focused on researching their products before they actually release them into the market. Mm -hmm. This includes in vitro studies and there is now a lot of data that was collected before we actually released the Straum and Pure Ceramic. So for about 12 years. Currently, uh, the ceramic implant has about five or six years of data in patients' mouths. And the benefits that we've been reporting have been similar success with osseo integration as our traditional implants, except now you're having that material benefit. So the surface is showing similar results, very high, um, high success rates within patients but you really see the biocompatibility when it comes into the tissues around the implant and also just seeing the longevity of those that have already been placed. So um, some of the, the things that I think really matter in terms of biocompatibility and um, I've sort of done a bit of research myself into and based on the questions of my patients, um, I just want to share with the audience because I think it's really important to understand with when we talk about biocompatibility it's not just a fancy word there is a actual net effect of using a non biocompatible material in the mouth if we have a cross-sectional analysis so we look at the uh, tissues of a patient when we put a non biocompatible material in contact with them it produces chronic inflammation and so from what i've seen at the moment from some of the cross-sectional analysis from the zla yes yeah, so zla surface which is the zirconium surface of this implant is that there's no inflammation at all produced um, and yes it's, so it's sort of six years that we're seeing this now in humans but that's a really good indication, I would say. And generally speaking, we know from using zirconia in crowns, this is a zirconia ceramic implant, that it's very, very stable, um, highly biocompatible. And that's the thing that really sort of matters to my patients. And I take that one step further on like a patient perspective and, and share that we don't have like any trace or like we can't see at the moment that there's any electric uh, electrochemical or thermic um, reaction with the tissues so it's not acting as um, something that's going to have you know electrical effects on the body a lot of my patients say meridians I'm not really totally qualified to know how this affects that but I do know it's a major concern and so it's a concern of mine and as it's a ceramic it's very boring and inert so that's like a great game changer uh, from the patient's perspective so having that biocompatibility having that um, inert state being white for the aesthetics it's just such a more pure option the other thing is that on the prosthetic side of things it's way simpler too because after the implant has integrated and this is something that not a lot of dentists even seem to talk about and I use this technology here in my practice every day which is the three-dimensional modeling and 3d scanning and providing patients with um, you know same day outcomes we can actually make either a zirconia or some sort of other sometimes a bit more aesthetic um, ceramic we can make a ceramic crown in the same visit but we can get them in we can check the integration and then issue a crown on the exact same day with our modern digital technology and so I think that's a really exciting improvement to bringing you know the same sorts of treatments to patients and whenever we save time we save cost it's been really good having you here to talk and share about biocompatibility and the advantages of the Strauman implant. Thanks Murray and yeah just to add to that this is just about providing options and Strauman is about providing options. Patients uh, are now weighing in to the conversation and doctors like yourself that actually actively encourage patients to get involved in that conversation mean that patients can actually choose what they have placed in their body or the types of treatment that suit them and their lifestyle and their and their health goals so and we even saw 
now that we have the ceramic dental implants, this is coming from a long history in the orthopedic industry where they changed from titanium, um, their titanium parts that they were using. So and like then- in, in operations? That's like, Wow, like, like what sort of operations? Is, I think it's like uh, hip, hip operations and that sort of thing. Well, the interesting thing is where all these joints, uh, hip joints are uh, manufactured is mainly in Germany. And that's actually the place in the world where the most ceramic implants are placed. Right. So they're far ahead of it. But that is where the whole titanium and ceramic options started to come out of. And then dental implants, it's still bone, it's still it's still placing something into the bone, which is the, and it has to integrate for function to happen. And that's the same idea with a dental implant. Well, as I said before, thank you so much for giving us your time and for sharing your knowledge. Um, there's obviously a lot there and I hope we can do this again and bring more value to people. If this has been at all helpful or you have any comments or questions or things you'd like to know um, about ceramic implants or anything in dentistry, make sure you um, send us a comment or get in touch somehow and, and, and give us your questions and your opinions and your feedback. I'll see you on the next video or the next interview with Imogen. Take care.